بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم. So today is very easy. We didn't make kunya ready. Nothing to really go over. This is a quickly recap. We're discussing the word marfu' موقوف مقطوعاً المسند. So if you have a sentence like this, and we have the rawi, the shafi, and Malik, أخبره أن نافع عبد الله بن عمر أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال. So who's the last person? Who's the person narrating the statement? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when a sanad ends of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we call this what hadithun? Marfu. This came already by Qunya. If the hadith, if the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have a sahabi, you have a tabi, you have a... And if it ends at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we call it hadithun? Marfu. And if, and if it ends at what? A sahabi is called? Mawquf. And if it ends at a tabi, it's called? Maqtu. And you can also call it maqtu and a mawquf. You can call these two what? You call this, is also called Athar. Yes, so in here, Abdullah ibn Umar is saying something, and in here, a Sahabi is saying something, so it's called Hadith al Mawquf. And in here, a Tabi'i is saying something, it's called Hadith al Maqtu. Yes? You follow? So, Hadith Marfu', the statement of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hadith Mawquf, a statement of a Sahabi, and Hadith Maqtu is a statement of a companion, a Tabi'i, or somebody below them. So, this is what Ibn Hajar Rahimullah is saying. Thumma al Isnadu imma ayyan tahiyya. Then the isnad, isnad means the chain. So the isnad of the sanad, either it ends with Ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now leave this out for now. Min qawlin, min qawlihi, aw fa'lihi, aw taqreerihi. Yes? Or some people say you can also add siratihi as well, but that's all technical stuff. Mainly, so any sanad which ends with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he say, he say his, his what? He said something, he done something, or he approved of something. Or even his, some people even have wasfihi. Some people have wasiratihi. Okay? So any of these things, it's called a hadith. It's called hadith marfu'. Yes? If the prophet say, qawl, the prophet statement, fa'il, or the prophet's approval, this is called taqreer. Yes? Taqreer came before? His approval. Something was done in the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's presence, and he knew about it, or it was done in his in Medina Munawwara, wherever he was, and he knew about it, and he said, quiet, it's called taqareer. So any of this is called what? Hadithun Marfur. Understood? Yes? Is that clear? Okay. Now he mentioned tasrihan aw hukman. What does this mean? It's something new. This is not in Baykhunia. What does it mean here? That you can have a scenario, you can have a scenario where uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the one saying something. Yes? Like it says, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can also have a scenario, you can also have a scenario where it's not the Prophet didn't say something, but we know that Sahabi is quoting Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's not quoting, sorry, he's not quoting Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he's saying something which he could not know by himself. So for example, if a Sahabi says, um, um, that in Jannah is a door called some so and so. How would a Sahabi know? So either Sahabi is lying, we don't, we don't accept that. Or the Sahabi was what? How did you find out about that? From the Prophet. ﷺ. Yes? So even though he has not said the Prophet said this, how has it come about? How, do, how, do, how would you know this? From the Prophet. ﷺ. So if it's the Prophet's statement directly, it's tasrihan, explicit. We explicitly know. We explicitly know what? We explicitly know what? That the Prophet said this. Or it's hukman. Or it's hukman. What does hukman mean? That it is in a ruling of a marfu'. That even though the Prophet never said it himself, we understand that it is something that he, he could only have... No, even though the Sahabi never said the Prophet said so, the only way he could have known is via the Prophet him telling him. But this as people, as I said, people do irasal, they don't always mention the, the chain. So Sahabi is... Maybe the Sahabi is not, he's at home, talking to his children. So he doesn't always quote all oh, the Prophet said this, Prophet he's just saying what? This is uh, in Jannah, this is the reward for this. A reward. So anytime a Sahabi quotes a reward, whether he says the Prophet's name or not, it's going to be what? Marfu, because the only way he would know a reward or something is what? Via the Prophet's statement. Do you understand? Does this make sense? Yeah? Understood? Yes. Good? Is that clear? Everybody following? Okay. Okay. Or oh, ila sahabi 
But however, there's one condition, for example, if the Sahabi narrates, okay, Musa did this. Is that marfu' hukman or not? Why? Yeah, so it depends on the Sahabi. If a Sahabi quotes from, a, a Sahabi says something about the previous Ummah, or even says something from the unseen, from the ghayb, but he is known to have taken stuff from the ulama of the Yahud who converted to Islam during the Prophet's life or after the Prophet's life or they, they, they interacted with them, then it is possible that this companion or this even this tabi'i may be narrating from the Banu Israel. So in a sense, some ahadith, you have certain things about the ghayb. But is it hukm marfu or not? You will see that is this Sahabi, was he only, did he, did he, is he one who narrates on Banu Israel or not? Did he have ulama of the Banu Israel who converted him? Kabul al Qurazi. He was a, uh, from the Banu Israel. So some people narrate from him. So was he one of the people who narrate from him or not? If he is, then we say, well, so this is maybe from the Israeliya, not, not a marfu. Do you understand? Same thing. If a Tabi narrates something which is un, from the unseen, a reward of something, we would have the same principle. If it is, and and it's not it's not mudrakun bil qiyas bil aql. He himself is not ishtihad, it's fatwa, not fatwa. It's, it's something from the unseen, from the ghayb, pure knowledge and transmitted knowledge. We will say, well, even though he's saying the tabi is saying it, it must have been from a sahabi or from a uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, unless he's known to have interacted with the banu israel or the the the, the, the converts Muslims and taken he narrates things from them. You understand? Then we say, well, we'll have to tawakkuf here. We can't be sure it's a marafur. You understand? But the early, the kibaru sahaba, the elder sahaba, when they narrate things of the ajar and reward and, and things like this, we would normally take as a marafur. But it's not, it's just a rule of thumb. Each case has to be analyzed. Okay, each, each scenario must be analyzed case by case. Or the next thing is out ila sahabi. That the, the chain ends at the sahabi. So, the chain and the Sahabi, Kadalik, meaning like what? Min qawlihi aw fa'lihi aw taqreerihi. Yes, it shows a statement of a companion, or the fa'l of a companion, or a taqreer of a companion. Yes? That's going to be what? What's that going to be called? Mawquf. But obviously, who's the Sahabi? Tarifah the Sahabi. Huwa man laqiyya nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mu'minan bihi. He is a person who met the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the state of Iman وَمَاتَ islam and died as a believer وَلَوْ تَخَلَّلَتْ رِدَّةٌ فِي الْأَصَحْ What is خِلَال mean تَخَلَّلَ خِلَال of the beard when you put your fingers between the beard the khalal is a hole so basically to come in between something so even if ridda apostasy came in between what happened after Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi passed away there was a bit of a there was different people one of the people of Madinah Munawwara people of Makkah some people uh, they stayed from everything was normal. Some of them they had a dispute with Abu. Uh, they had a misunderstanding and a kind of dispute with Abu Bakr radiAllahu Taala Anhu regarding zakah. Is zakah a personal ibadah or is zakah a governmental collective ibadah? So therefore, Abu Bakr radiAllahu Anhu and the Ajumhu and the the the, 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 the masla, masala was it's a, it's, a, it's a collective governmental ibadah. Therefore, the government will collect and the government will distribute. And they had the opinion that they thought they thought was well. We're not going to give zakat to you. We give zakat our salam. So perform, you don't come and check our salah. So you don't come and check our zakat. We give zakat to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But that was only for him. The zakat will be do, we do our salus. So that, that's called that's called ridda. But they didn't lose faith or they didn't become like disbelievers. But they had this uh, thing. Yes? And then you had those who said, yeah, we'll make our, we'll make our own Prophet. Like Musaylama and Saja and who else? Uh, Aswad al Anasi, huh? Huh? Tulayha, yeah, all of those. So then they actually like, claim prophethood on that. So that's ridda, like extreme ridda. And the other one is basically, is a ridda amali, meaning they had this like dispute in this. And it all came down on an end. And then the Prophet said, uh, those who, the zakat ones, they came back normally. And those who, like Muslim and the and from the Yamama, they had jihad against, etc. So what about those? Because some of those people came. And if they became, they became Muslim for some time at the end, none of the Muhajir and Ansar were like this. But those who came at the end, what if they in between had ridda? Are they still counted as Sahabi? Or are they not a Sahabi? Do you understand? Because they met the Prophet as a Muslim, but then they became non-Muslim again. And if they converted again afterwards with that, so then it's ikhlaf. Well, his opinion, fil asah, is what? That they would still be considered to be Muslims, even if they had that, that space in between, where they left Islam. According to the Hajar, he's thinking that's the most preferred opinion. 
but obviously a very low level Sahabi. It, again, you have the two opinions regarding that as well. Yes? You following? Okay. Or in the Tabi'i. You have a Qawl of a Tabi'i, a Fell of a Tabi'i, or Taqlid of a Tabi'i. But obviously, each person goes down there, isn't it? The Prophet's Fell is important, the Prophet's Qawl is important, the Prophet's Taqlid is important, the Prophet's Wasf is important, like even how we look. It's important, even a seerah is important, like things are not cold, but he danced, he sat. So it's a fail, but maybe, I don't know. I can't remember, there's a reason they put seerahs, but I can't remember why. Uh, somebody had put that, this clue something. So, this is a, obviously Sahabi, his cold is important and his fail is important, taqreed is not that important. A tabi's cold is important, his fail and taqreed, it gives us nasiha, etc. But it's not, as again, the lower you come down, the less things of that become important. Obviously, it's still useful. And they're beneficial, but it's not like the same standing. So it's tabi'i, like he's not as like the Prophet is very, very he's responsible. So even if something is gathering takes place wrong, he would say, No, this is incorrect. A tabi may not do that. So tabi taqreer is very like it's not you can say how shweek it is compared to the Prophet's taqreer. But it's still mentioned, it's still the mawkuf. Who's the tabi'i? He is the one who met the sahabi. Like it's similar, like this, same thing. Yes. So for the awal. فالأول المرفوع والثاني الموقوف والثالث المقطوع سوري والثالث المقطوع yes يفهمين ومن دون التابعي فيه مثله what about التابع التابعي أو أتباع الأتباع we say that we also call that مقطوع we also call that what مقطوع so for example إمام مالك إذا ااا okay who's the who's the إمام مالك إذا تابع تابع التابعي so if my Malik says something, you call it called that. You call it called the Maqtu Maqtu. Yes. You call anything below Tabi Maqtu. Call it Maqtu. Yes. Are you following? Now, and he's saying here that that in his opinion, the last two again different again. This is the last two are also called what the last two. Qawlu Sahabi and Qawlu Tabi According to some group, some scholar, it's again, it, you can call it whatever you want, but like, they, they, they mustalah, their term was that they would call a non marfu author. Yes, author of Jama'a Athar, so author of Abdullah ibn Umar, meaning his statement, author of uh, Umar radiallahu anhu. However, other people have called author as this as well. Remember, I told you what book was it? Sharh Ma'ani al Athar, or Sharh Mushkil al Athar, they refer to Athar as hadith as well. So, this is not like fixed, this is like some people. What you call it. The last two, some people call it. So sometimes you have to see who is speaking. So when they say Athar, sometimes they refer to the last two. They call it a Sahabi, they call it a Tabi'i. And some people refer to uh, the Marfu as Athar as well. Understood? Yes? No. And then we get before, Wal Musnadu, what's the Musnad? Marfu'u Sahabiyin bi sanadin zahirun ittisal. So the word, the word Musnad has two aspects. It encompasses what? The ittisal sanad and the intiha sanad. If the, if, the, if the last person in the chain is who? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is called what? Marfu'. If there's no missing links in the chain, it's called? Muttasil. If it's muttasil and marfu', you call it? Muslim. Al marrafi. Al bayquniyah. Yes? So if it's marfu' and, if it's marfu and muttasil, you call it what? Musnad. Fahim? Understood? Any questions regarding this? سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك ونشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت ونستغفرك ونتوب إليك